So anyway, hello and welcome back to another rock series video and in today's video we're going to have a look at the difference between andesite which is a volcanic rock, so volcanic is extrusive, comes out of the ground basically and oh that actually looks like two rocks, one rock Ooh. and we're looking at diorite, so this is a plutonic or intrusive means it actually crystallizes under the actual ground okay but the first things first in the actual qapf diagram they actually classify gabbro so this is gabbro here and diorite uh, as the same as well as anthracite but i don't have any anthracite on me as you can see, it's actually quite similar. Uh, the Gabbro is actually uh, has a lot larger crystals, and they basically determine it chemically uh, the differences that are actually in the rock. So diorite actually should have uh, more sodium than calcium uh, plagioclase. So you can't actually tell that from actually looking at the rock. And also there should be virtually no olivine or amphiboles in a diorite in which they do occur in an actual gabbro. So they're just different types of uh, minerals. So minerals are actually separate from a rock. So these rocks are actually made up of different minerals. So the main composition of uh, andesite is basically uh, you have uh, 52 to 63% silicon in which the gabbro and basalt has less than that. That's in weight. Now if you can look up close we have a lot of crystals. So we have feldspars, which are the white colour, the quartz, if there's some present, it's actually like a, a smoky quartz. Then we have biotite, so there's a biotite here. You can tell uh, the extinction, oh, biotite's a flat crystal, so it looks like a piece of paper. Uh, you can actually see quite a few of them in here. And you also got... Uh, Horn blend and pyroxene, so they're the actual dark crystals that are not flat. So to actually see, you need to actually look up closer. And this one does actually have good magnification. So if you just rotate it, you see you got pyroxene and horn blend, and then we got what was that? It's a bit hard to actually tell with this camera, so I actually need a better camera to actually do it. And then we have andesite. So andesite, you can see large crystals of feldspar and probably pyroxene. Can you see any actual quartz? Mm. Can't really tell. Looks like there's some mica as well. So. Looks like the mica. So you actually need to actually get a closer view and see if that's actually yeah, it looks like it. And you have a darker crystal, so probably a horn blend. So those are the actual uh, two rocks. They are the same mineralogy. So if we zoom out, so these are actually the pretty much the same mineralogy. Uh, you could, do get differences in the composition of the rocks from different parts of the world, but we have these two rocks together from the same age. Generally, one is the uh, pluton that formed batholith on the ground, and the other one was the extruded part that came out of a volcano. If it is a young rock, then most likely you won't be able to find a batholith because it's still on the ground. Uh, if it's an older rock, like in Victoria, we have them from the Devonian. Uh, we don't have any 
andesite or diorite so I'm not too sure where these two rocks actually come from and looking at the Australian Radiographic Database uh, we don't have much of these rocks so I'm assuming that these actually come from overseas so these actually formed when uh, actual two continents actually come together or a convergent boundary so and also island arcs as well so you can find a lot of these in the Andes and also island arcs actually form um, um, like between Japan and or the Okinawa that's that's it so that's between the Japan island the main island and uh, Taiwan so that is basically these two rocks and if we have a look at the actual basalt so the andesite and the basalt are usually classed together but the basalt is finer grained so as you can see it's got a lot smaller crystals and also the difference is that the basalt will have less than 52% uh, silicon so it's actually mafic and this is intermediate so it's 52 to 63% and not all andesite actually looks the actual same just like not all basalt, basalt can have vesicles so the andesite actually could have uh, smaller crystals so these are like thinner crisps and it can have uh, larger crystals so porphyritic with large crystals of plagioclase so that's basically how you uh, can tell the difference um, but looking at a rock it's actually a, a lot harder to actually tell what it actually is so that is why we actually need to use uh, this is a QAPF diagram it shows uh, diorite as well as gabbro and anthracite in this small section but really diorite also includes these areas as well so you up here you've got quartz diorite you have monzo diorite, monzo gabbro in these areas, and then you've got the feldspar fluid bearing diorites, gabbros, and anthracites. So you can actually get a big difference. Wow, that's a revelation. I think these geologists are just pretty confused as to what they're actually going to actually, you know, include. In the diorite and the gabbro, basically the silicon content. So you can see diorite has uh, less than 5% quartz. And yeah, most of it is uh, plagioclase, uh, sodium rich. Then we've got andesite. And that actually just includes this whole area along with uh, basalt. So basalt mineralogy is in class as the same. So here we have the basalt and the site. So as you can see, it can contain 0 to 20% uh, quartz in it. And, yeah. And, but that's separate from uh, silicon dioxide. Uh, and it's like 65 to 100% uh, plagioclase. And you can have some feldspar forwards in it up to 10%. So that is... Uh, well, andesite it encompasses a wider variety of uh, percentages than uh, the actual diorite rock. So andesite includes different types of rock that are its intrusive equivalent. So if we look at the actual TAS diagram, uh, on this side we actually have the sodium and potassium content and that's against the silicon content you can see that in this portion here we have between 57 and 63 percent silicon 
And we've got it between uh, 6 and 7 percent of these sodium and calcium oxides. So that is different than uh, an actual basalt, which is actually down here. And this is a uh, baso and the site. So in between both of these two, and as you can see, 52%. So basalt's got less than 52%. Uh, silicon oxide, so that's how you can tell the difference. You need actually to do chemical experiment, which costs too much money. You might be thinking, oh, but this is too much information. Ah, uh, well, basically what you do is you take one rock and you learn that one first. You don't learn all this together, just learn one. Get familiar with that. Maybe take a week to learn it. Do the ever rock but basically uh, if we look at andesite and diorite we can see oh about 70 percent of it uh, between 60 and 50 to 70 percent is plagioclase so it goes from sodium rich to calcium rich as we get towards gabbro and as you can see, pyroxene in Gabbro increases. And in diorite, it's probably only like less than 5%. Then we have biotite, uh, it's probably less than 5% as well. So we've got, when we're looking at that, we're looking at basically probably in that range there. So this is in the middle. And amphibile, which is a horn blend, includes horn blend, is about... 20%. Okay, so take here, you're probably about 20. Take here, you're probably also 20. So 20 to 22%, something like that anyway. Uh, it depends on whereabouts you actually get the rocks. So, um, also, a amphibole sure will be subjected to. A condition called fractional crystallization, in which the crystals with the highest temperature uh, would actually crystallize first. So we're talking about olivine and amphiboles. And as those two actually are taken out of the mix, they take with it uh, magnesium and iron. So that actually depletes it. And as it is actually depleted, it doesn't become a basalt anymore. So it's not a basalt, it's actually an intermediate. Uh, because as you remove the magnesium and iron, the silicon oxide content actually increases. So, because the ratio of uh, iron, magnesium and silicon uh, dioxide is actually a lot lower than in a plagioclase quartz. Quartz is basically just pure silicon dioxide. And orthoclase, which is potassium uh, feldspar. So, that is the actual main difference. And I actually hope I have actually cleared this up for you. So these two rocks are just basically the same. And here is the actual mineral composition. So just basically learn the ratios. Learn what they actually look like. So you, you've got the internet. Look up the internet. So we'll do that now. All you need to do is, okay, let's look up. And the site. Okay, and the site. Go okay. images. And here we go. We have a hell of a lot of variety of and the site. So we've got la ones with large fenacris, uh, feldspars, and pyroxenes, jet propulsion laboratory. Should be on the whatever. Uh, this one has vesicles and this one's fine grained. 
and you have a lot of different colors as well so you can actually come in a light grays dark grays as well as you know you can get them you know with like green crystals in them as well so yeah, you get really different varieties and here's a minecraft version of it <laughs> that's funny <laughs> okay let's have a look at this rock here and volcanic discovery and you have to remember is that you need to actually uh, okay see this one is actually looks like a fine grain Celtic with large horn blend crystals. Hmm. So, so this is a grey to black volcanic rock between 52 and 63 percent silica. This is actually a pretty light coloured. And then we have. Paradise Valley. Is it? John G101. So basically, you can actually take these rocks. Now you can look at it, uh, but unless you know where it actually comes from, unless the geology has been mapped, uh, you can only have a rough guess of what actual type of rock it is. Because. Here I have a, another rock I actually know. So it's a Rio Day site from Donna Buang. It looks pretty similar to an andesite. Even though if we look at the actual class. So we've got that one. The, this rock here is in between here. So it has lots of quartz all for clays. Not as much uh, horn blend or the actual biotide muscovite mica. And this one andesite is in the middle. So it's more plagioclase. But, you know, if you're not experienced, then you'll think they're actually similar. Or you might actually... So you actually might actually get confused between the actual two. Uh... Yeah, but this one's nice, good for cutting stuff with. So anyway, that is a comparison of endosite and diorite and its relationships with other volcanic rocks that are close in composition to it. Hope this helps you with your geology lesson. If I'm a little bit confusing, just let me know down below what you are actually a bit confused about. Hopefully I can make another video to clear that up. So thank you very much. And have an awesome rock collecting time. Thank you and goodbye.